Thank you, singers and musicians. Thank you for your faithful giving to the Lord. God's people, all God's people said amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to pray right now all over this place. I just want to take a few moments. I have a message prepared, but it's a long message, and uh, we do have a, uh, a funeral to prepare for. But I, I do feel that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to your heart in these next few moments. How many of you know that uh, every one of us has a need? You know what I have found? That we have needs that sometimes are so covered over by discouragement, by bitterness, by unforgiveness, uh, by just the, the time, the callous uh, effect of time, or, or time has had an effect of just causing a callousness over our heart and over our, the need of our heart. And the Holy Spirit comes, and the Bible tells us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. God's Holy Spirit is here this morning. God's presence is here. But you and I have a choice. Will we open up and respond to the Spirit of God? Now, you have to understand that, you know, it's God that does the heavy lifting. Hello? Some of you have been carrying a burden, and, and God never intended you to carry it. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So you're carrying a burden and you wonder why there's stress, there's anxiety, you wonder why the pressure, you wonder why you're tired so much. How many of you take a nap and you still wake up tired? Amen? Uh, how many of you have a 10 hour, uh, well, I wish you had, I wish I had a 10 hours of sleep, but, but you wake up and you're still tired. A lot of times it's, it's not the physical, it's the emotional stress and anxiety and pressure of weight that we're carrying we serve a God who loves us. We serve a God who carries our burdens. Amen. The Bible says that he is our burden bearer. He, he bore our iniquities. He bore our weaknesses. He bore them on the cross. In this morning, in these next few moments, I just want to, I want us to pray. But I, 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 I really, just knowing Knowing humanity, knowing human nature, knowing some of you, there are some issues that are so deep in your heart that the Holy Spirit is trying to get to, but you have to open up. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, in chapter 2 and 3, John writes about the churches that were in the first century just so close to Christ, so close to the apostles, so close to the ministry of Jesus, just, just maybe removed by 10, 20, 30 years. And, and these churches already had gotten mixed up in false doctrine. They already had gotten mixed up in sinful lifestyles. They already had gotten confused and confounded. And, and I just say, God, how in the world can that happen in such a short amount of time? And the realization is that wherever there is humanity, there is the propensity for sin, for false doctrine, for going in the wrong direction. We, you and I left to ourselves, we're going to go in the wrong direction. Our heart is prone to wander. The hymn writer said, our heart is prone to wander from the God that I love. And think about it. And, you know, what does humanity say? Humanity says if we have more education, we'll solve all the problems in the world. And I, I think education's great. We just honored young people getting an education. I have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. I believe in education. But education will not solve the problems. It'll just make a criminal who just robs on a street corner. Now he'll rob with a briefcase and he'll rob through the Internet. And he'll just be an educated criminal. Well, if, if we, we just, you know, love one another and we just, you know, have no uh, issues and, and we get it all politically right, we're still working on political correctness. We've got a long way to go. But it's not about political correctness. It's about the heart. A lot of the, what are the racial issues are, are not political issues as much as they're spiritual issues. Come on now. The heart of the matter. And, and we say a lot of things, but the reality of it is that, that we're dealing with stuff in our own life. And, 
And, and, and oh, if we had, if, if our communities were, were, had all the money and all the education and all the, we would be all, all good. Think of the first sin. The first sin was in the God, was in paradise. In perfect environment, and mankind messed it up. Why? Because of the, of the human nature and of the devil. The devil is at work. And we need to start right here, right now, in our own heart. It's not pointing the finger. It's not, it's saying, God, what in my heart needs to be healed? Why? Because hurt people hurt people. And if we have hurts and we have prejudices, oh, come on, it's not just prejudice against black and white. Let me tell you, I have seen prejudices amongst countrymen. Hello? Hello? I have seen prejudice among the people of their own color, their own race, their own tribe, their own people. It's the heart issue. God wants to heal the heart. God wants to purify the heart. God wants to change the heart. In Jesus, in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, in the church that was so close to Jesus in proximity or, or in time, the time factor, yet... They were all messed up. And one church in particular, the church at Laodicea, the Bible says that Jesus stood at the door of that church and he knocked. He said, if anyone hears my voice and opens up, I'll come in. Think about that. Think about, you know, Jesus should be in the center of his church. Jesus' presence should be in Christian churches. And you would think that's a, that's a, a no-brainer. But the reality was Jesus was on the outside knocking on the door and asking to come into his own house. Imagine what could happen in churches. Imagine what could happen in families when we shut the door to one another, when we shut the door to Jesus. If we can just open up. Jesus said, if any man hears my voice and opens up, you know what that tells me? That tells me that if just one person responds to the Spirit of God, a miracle could happen. If one person in a church responds to God in a powerful way, revival could happen. If one person in a family, in a marriage, responds to God, a miracle could happen. If one person, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and I'll, I'll eat with, I'll fellowship, I'll be with you. Think about it. Jesus is knocking at the door. He says, hear, hear my voice. Listen, in this morning, can we hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit? Maybe there's someone here you're struggling with, with some, some, some issues in your heart. And, and you're, just, you're, you're just wrestling with it, but you're trying to fix it yourself. You know, you can use all your strength, but you know what? At the end of the day, you're only going to get what your strength could do, what your power can do. You can use all of your abilities, but at the end of the day, it's only going to be what your abilities can do. But when you pray and you open up to God, you'll see what God can do. You'll see what God can do. In the work that God begins, he begins in the heart of man. If you open up, in that scripture in Revelation chapter 3, many times there are Christians, there are teachers and evangelists who want to use that verse of scripture for evangelism, for a new believer. But Jesus wasn't talking to unbelievers he was talking to believers imagine imagine a church where jesus doesn't even have the he's not even on the inside of his own church he's not he don't even have the keys to his own house why because of man and you know what that church said that church said we are full we are well fed we are rich we have need of nothing I have seen some people's lives who are confused and confounded and a mess. But they will, let, they will tell you they got it all under control. That's pride. That's pride. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Are you so defensive when someone talks to you? Are you so argumentative when someone talks to you? Then that might be a sign of pride that you can't be told anything. Turn to the person next to you and say, he can't be talking about you. <laughs> but the reality is, when we humble ourselves, God gives a special grace. 
God gives a special grace. God wants to give a grace to a long-standing problem. He wants to give grace to it to begin to change it, to begin to change it. Come on, how many of you believe today God wants to change some things in your life? We are all people who have dysfunction. We have limitations. We have liabilities. Why? Because we are human. Isn't that true? Anybody here that doesn't have any fears? Anybody here that doesn't have any hang-ups? Anybody here that doesn't have any issues? <laughs> I won't raise my hand. Aren't you glad you don't have a perfect pastor? That'd be tough to live with if I was perfect, wouldn't it be? But you know what the Bible says? That God chose the, the priesthood in the Old Testament a little different from the New Testament, but same principle. God chose those among men who were subject to the same kind of weaknesses so that they can minister in compassion and grace. I am today what I am by the grace of God. But I have not yet arrived. But I press on. I press on for the high calling. We have a high calling, and it is in Christ. It is in Christ. It's not according to the standards of the world. How long will you try to keep up with the Kardashians instead of keeping up with Jesus, instead of keeping up with the apostles, instead of keeping up with the, what the Bible says? How many of you will choose to take your standards according to the world's standards? My Lord, seriously, we walk to a different drumbeat. We walk to the drumbeat of God Almighty and His Word. Because at the end of the day, people in Hollywood are all messed up. Come on, let's face it. People in Hollywood that you look at and you 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 say, "Oh, I wish I had that. I wish I had their crib. I wish I had their their wheels. I wish I had their money." They're messed up. Why? Because the things of this world cannot satisfy the heart of man. Only Jesus can. Only Jesus can satisfy. You could take that to the bank. You could disagree with it. You could agree with it. You could do whatever, whatever you want to do with it. But that's the truth. Only Jesus. You can't make enough money to be happy. Some of the richest people. Look at Warren Buffett. I don't understand Warren Buffett. He's a brilliant, brilliant businessman, one of the wisest businessmen in the world. He's worth, what, $60, $70 billion? You know what he eats for breakfast? You know what he says? If he goes to McDonald's and he buys uh, an Egg McMuffin, and if he feels prosperous, he buys an Egg McMuffin with sausage patty. He, he, he's, he's wrestling with, should I spend $2.39 or $3.19? And he don't buy a drink. His wife fills his cup up with Coke. That's his favorite drink. I think he owns half the company, but I don't understand Warren Buffett. But God bless him. I mean, I mean at least splurge a little bit. Go, go have breakfast at IHOP. That might cost you $50, but at least you'll enjoy it. But, but all the money in the world, some of the richest people, they've been asked, how much more do you need? Just one more dollar, they say. Just one more dollar. And all of those things cannot satisfy the deepest need of the heart of you and I. That's why we praise and worship here at Victory and we give it a priority. You know, there are some people that they come to church late because they think praise and worship is a preliminary God, help us. Praising God, a preliminary, coming late to church because praise and worship's not important. It is part and parcel of who we are. We are worshipers. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. The psalmist David was who he was, king of Israel, because he learned how to worship God. And God said, I'll, I'll honor those who honor me. I'll exalt those who exalt me. Praise and worship frees us up in his presence. And we're healed and we're changed. Why do you think it's so hard to lift your hands? Some of you, it might, you might think you had a 50-pound weight on your hands. Why is it hard? Not because your arms are heavy, but because the devil is wants to give oppression and negativity and discouragement. 
So many church people. I have traveled around. My wife has traveled. To some tra- and she says, you know, you won't believe. She tells me sometimes, you know, I get frustrated. I want pe- everybody to worship. She says she goes to a lot of places. People don't worship anymore. As soon as the song is over, it's like we've come into a, a mentality of, 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 of just being entertained in church. The singers and the musicians, we've got smokes and lights and screens and all. And I'm not against that. But if that's all we have, we're missing the mark. Worship opens up your heart. Praise opens up your heart to receive the healing grace of God in your life. God to go deep, deep, deep and to undo and untangle what the devil has done. That's why I learned how to worship because I need healing in my heart. I haven't arrived in these areas of my life. And, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, we, we've even seen a phenomenon in our churches nowadays. Instead of praise and worship, we clap. We clap. Like we're at a ball game. And listen, this, don't, don't misunderstand me, but let's look at the scriptures. Clapping is a small uh, facet of worship. Bible says clap your hands all you people but it also says shout to God with a voice of triumph I'm talking Bible this morning I'm sorry if you came to hear what Fox has to say or CNN come on or what your favorite reporter come on I'm talking Bible this morning the Bible says clap the Bible says dance before the Lord Oh, some of you are too dignified. You're too cute this morning. Come on, you're, you're, you, you're too dignified. You don't want to be radical this morning. Come on, God's looking for, for people. Come on, I've been to some of your countries. You, you, you used to dance. Oh, come on, what do we got to do? Just bang a drum and get you dancing? Come on, we dance before the Lord. Shout before the Lord. Celebrate. Before our God. What happens when that happens? Something by the power of God's spirit begins to to work and heal you and and free you up. And Jesus said, I've come to set the captive free. I've come to heal the brokenhearted. I've come to give recovery of sight to the blind. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Come on, we're living in a day. We're living in an age where the darkness is getting darker. The world is getting crazier. Do we need some, some, some changes in our gun laws? Yes, we do. But that ain't going to solve the problem. That was the case. We might as well take away all the phones and computers from people from the evil they're doing with them. We need to see the heart changed. We need to see it start right here with you and I. People need the healing grace of God. People need the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We're living in a world that's getting crazier by the moment. And you know what I, you know what I believe this is? I believe what we're seeing in this world. Don't you think for a moment a politician's going to solve the problem? Hello? It's not going to be a donkey. It's not going to be an elephant. In case you don't know, those are symbols for the different political parties, but it's going to be a lamb. It's going to be the lamb of God. This world, I'm not being pessimistic or negative. This world is not going to get better. I believe part of what we're seeing in this country and around the world is is the, 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 the walls of God's protection coming down because we've kicked God out of the schools. We've kicked God out of our uh, holes of, of politics. We've kicked God out of TV. And we've got all manner of vileness and filth and ungodliness in every way you turn. And God says, I will not be mocked. You are left to your own devices. And I believe that God's protecting walls are being brought down. And the only way that turns around is the church. We're the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. We need, the Bible says, judgment will begin first in the house of God. God, help us. God, help us. God will judge this country. God is judging this country. God is judging this world. When when, when this world rejects God and rejects the gospel and makes fun of Christians, there will be judgment. But the Bible says, though the darkness get darker, the glory of the Lord will be upon 
the people of God. Come on, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on, I'm talking Bible this morning. Come on, I'm talking the Word of God. I'm not trying to be politically correct. I want to be biblically correct. Amen? There's a difference, you know. There's a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to minister healing. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. We're going to just sing one song, and we're going to pray this morning. Come on, we're going to pray this morning. And if you're willing to humble yourself and say, I need healing in my heart. I need to be made whole. There's something going on in my life, my marriage, my home, my family. But even in this church, maybe you haven't been living right. Come on, let's be, let's be uh, humble enough. Let's be true to God and say, you know what, God, I want to make it right. God, I want to get it right this morning. Come on, Jesus is standing at the door and he's knocking. Come on, God is knocking at your heart. Would you stand together with me this morning? We're going to end in prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I will come in and I'll fellowship. Don't you want the fellowship of Jesus this morning? Don't you want the healing virtue of Jesus today? Come on. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you this morning as the singers begin to play that you would move out of your seat. And I want to pray with you. I want to just seal this in the next few moments. And you would just say, you know what? I want to open up. I want to respond to the spirit of God. There are some things in my heart. There's some things in my life. And it could be every, anything from A to Z. It doesn't matter. And don't you worry about what people think of you. Oh, man, don't that that's a trap. People can't save you. They can't deliver you. They can't promote you. Let me tell you, when a ways when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace. Come on. I want to please the Lord. Come on. I want my ways to please God. I want to open up my heart. Come on. Jesus is knocking. Come on. Jesus is knocking this morning, saying, if you'll open up, I'll come in. I'll rearrange some things. I'll change some things. I'll heal some things.